seek and knock. Because we never want to say we have not, because we're asking that we want to have the abundance of your love as we raise your praise every day. We do this by lifting up our, our repentance, we lifting up our prayers daily. As you pour down the new mercies of this day, in the matchless name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, we love thee. Brothers and sisters, this is definitely a blessed morning. Excuse me. <coughs> a blessed Monday morning. As I, my wife just gave me her cup of wisdom, which is, I'm just taking a moment here. And the beautiful truth of this cup of water may be gone in a few minutes, but the cup of, of wisdom that you ask God to place and place and place in front of you is never, ever empty. Well, that brings us to where we are today, as in Proverbs 13, verse 11. Wealth gotten by vanity shall be diminished, but he that gathereth by labor shall increase. Hope deferred maketh the heart sick, but when the desire cometh, it is a tree of life. So we, when we have the abundance of wisdom, the knowledge, we do have that tree of life that God has blessed us with. And wealth gotten by vanity, just by your own loving self, without the blessings of the Lord, shall diminish. But he that gathered by labor shall increase. Your labor with the Lord, who's going to bless you? He's going to bless you abundantly. He's going to be with you. All you have to do, brothers and sisters, is to live that life of obedience. Because in God's world, there is no vanity, there is no seat. Your hope does not make your heart sick when you're with God. It is a new heart that guides you through all oh, blessings and oh, the purity of wisdom. Blessed by hope, birth to love, and brings you through that ever beautiful expression of faith that we all live by. And we back up our faith with our actions. Whoso despises the word shall be destroyed. That's a fool. But he that feareth the commandment shall be rewarded. So the beginning of wisdom is the knowledge of the fear of the Lord. God wrote this beautiful love poem called the Bible for you. And we understand that this is the man, this is God who created the universe and there is only one God. There's only one person that we do worship. There's one person that we only give our glory to. The law of the wise is the fountain of life, of life, to, to depart from the snares of death. The curse of the law of poverty, sickness, and death. Wisdom gives you that new fountain of life, gives you that abundance flow to, to express God's beautiful truth. And drinking from that fountain of life is drinking from the river of wisdom. And give understanding, good understanding giveth favor, but the way of the transgressors is hard. So we do have that great understanding of the favor that God has given us, yet we also should know by now that the life of the Lord doesn't necessarily it's going to be a pleasant one. That it's going to be a beautiful one, but it's going to, not going to be a pleasant one. So we do know that in our calling we shall be betrayed, denied, persecuted, spit on. And but but we're doing this because remember Jesus Christ was persecuted for our sakes before us. So who are we to complain? And with this, brothers and sisters, we have the knowledge. As verse 16 says, Every prudent man dealeth with knowledge, but a fool layeth open his folly. And folly, as we speak of wisdom versus folly, is there's fun and then there's, you know, the idiocy of fun, and there's the fun that brings the wrong kind of attraction and attention to us. But, and yes, though we are with Christ, we can have all the fun we want. Within the, you know, the accountability that we lift up to God. And God wants you to have fun. doesn't mean you have to go out and have five or six other mistresses besides your wife. No. God wants you to have fun by just having that demonstration of His obedience and living the life of God and watching lives change around you and having fun with just simple, easy, humorous items of your life. Verse 17, a wicked messenger falleth into mischief, but a faithful ambassador is help. So you have the faith of Lord of God. You're lifting up his measurements of his faith. He is giving you that the health 
and you are representing the Lord's Word, the Living Word of God, the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit that you have inside you, the Spirit of the Living Word of God, that double-edged sword, and you are that ambassador, spreading that to every corner, every moment, every expression you go upon this earth, wherever you go, it is yours. Pa verse 18, Poverty and shame shall be to him that refuseth instruction, but he that regardeth reproof shall be honored. So if we don't receive the Lord's instructions, we don't receive and yet refuse this because we have all the answers. Then <clears throat> there is not much honor left to us, is there? There is there is absolutely nothing at all in honor of someone who commits the same old, same old sin all the time. What we are expressing, everybody, is the loving Lord brings us to all truth. And sometimes that truth is very hard to understand. Sometimes that truth is very hard to to want to digest. And, and the realities that kept me alive is when I lost my daughter, when I lost her mother, is that I knew with my experience as a Christian already and coming, coming from a troublesome background and joining me during those times was my wife. Yet, the strength of the Lord gave us a vision, the Lord gave us a manifestation upon a certain date in 2001. Yet I had to stay alive. I had to, just besides myself to think of, I had still two lovely daughters still living with me, still with me. And how suicide comes to uh, <coughs> an upper casing in one's life is they are deceived. Many entertainers feel that they will be more prosperous and famous if they commit suicide, if they die. That's not the way. God does not want you to give any type of victory to, the, to Satan. God created you to be a habitation for his glory. God did not create you to be equal to God by taking your own life. So the beautiful truth is, if I can survive everything from addictions to losing loved ones, to coming from an abusive background, and all these doors are, are closed. Yet, to be honest with you, it is very hard to to be healed when you have those that you love close to you still inside you with that pain. And there's nothing wrong in having that pain, but you can turn that pain into your gain with the powerful love of the blessings of the wisdom of God. Yet, I have removed away from any gambling addictions. I moved away from any sense of getting into drugs which is never the problem but we go forward brothers and sisters in lifting up a heart that our new heart that God has given us in the utmost purity because God has circumcised at all the stony edges of the old heart away and given us his new heart the life that we lift up in the utmost time frame of purity 19 the desire accomplishes sweet to the soul but it is abomination to the fools to depart from evil so the desire that God places on our hearts to accomplish His loving task, one task after another, to walk over the river of change to a new life with the Lord, to give us a beautiful truth. But it is, it is totally, totally a fool. As verse 20 again says, that he that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but a companion of fools shall be destroyed. If, we want, if that's the company you want to have, you are going to be destroyed. You walk with a millionaire, you're, people think you're a millionaire, you become a millionaire. If you walk with wise men, you're going to obtain the knowledge of men. If you walk with God, you have the wisdom and the knowledge of the fear of the Lord. 21. For evil pursueth sinners, but to the righteous good shall be to be paid. So, the counsel of the wicked shall destroy itself. You know, of course, the evil wants to destroy itself, keep it from suffocating any of his evil tactics to the world. But that's God. God is God, and God knows everything. 
but your righteous good shall be repaid. Your goodness of the Lord, any time you felt lost in sin, shall be restored back to you. Shall be restored back to you. And God is going to God is going to give you the guarantee this morning by coming forward and, and making all that lost time come back to you. A good man leaveth an inheritance to his children, and the wealth of the sinner is laid up for the just. So the inheritance of the sinner is just his, is laid up for his own people, his own shadows, his own vacuum, to basically, you know, the wealth, the wealth of the sinners. The wealth, the righteous shall obtain the wealth of the sinners. And we have to understand that God is God. God is going to bless us with, with the abundance of his blessing. All we have to do is ask, seek, and knock. And verse 23, 24, and 25. How much food is the tillage of the poor, but there is that is destroyed for want of judgment? He that spareth his rod hateth his son, but he that loveth him chasteneth him betimes. The righteous eateth to his satisfying of the soul, but the belly of the wicked shall want. So we move into our family. We teach the living word of God. It's not something that we keep in one place like the church. We move it into every place, every corner of the world. As my wife and I go to the unchurched, speaking through these broadcasts to tens of thousands under one view, going into over 200 churches and going into countries like Kenya, invited to Tanzania, South Africa, um, South Africa, uh, Nigeria, northern and southern India, going to Australia in 2013, England twice, and then we have Canada and our work continues here in Los Angeles, California. Now, if you are walking in the company of wisdom and, and the wise, you are learning that, that your old friends are going and departed from you. And you are strengthening yourself with new relationships. And we want to have a relationship with you. We want you to come into our ministry and get to know us. And we want to know you. Go to BrianTewitt.com. Click on the contact link and send, send us any questions you may have about us. BrianTewitt.com. And we, your first offering is your offering of obedience. And then we want your financial. We want you to become a financial partner with us by traveling with us to these countries. Be working on our evangelical team, working with our medical team, as we provide medical, basic medical needs to the women and children of these countries, and to go forward in the blessed measure of His faith, one one God, one love, one truth. So we thank you for your prayers and support ahead of time, and we know, and want you to know that you are in our prayers every day, and we are 501c3 certified church here in the United States. And we are a fruitful ministry. Be part of that fruit. Be part of the harvest. In the matchless name of Jesus. This comes, brothers and sisters, you coming into the accordance of life. And let me just share this. And again, Proverbs uh, 11 through 25 is our foundation scripture today. But let me give you one to digest today. Galatians chapter 2, verse 3. In whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. In whom are hid all treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So, God can give this to you. God wants to give this to you. God wants. God gave you giftings at your birth that are to be, that are to be, exploded into maturity. When you come into the Lord, when you are born again. I want you to discover the treasure you have laid before you, inside you, that, and that you have in Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and with this comes the absolute truth. With this comes that I believe this morning, tonight, wherever you are, you are going to feel the expressions of the Lord. All of, the, of the, all of the treasures of wisdom and knowledge and lay before you, and that is in Christ Christ Jesus. Romans 10.13 expresses to us, whosoever, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. The wisdom and knowledge is before you. Jesus Christ. To those who don't know Christ, to those who 
have that understanding and the feeling of the Lord. Feeling of the Lord. You want a prosperity, a life of prosperity? Come forward. You want to have a calling that nobody could ever touch? Come forward. You want to have a lifestyle equal to that of the ways of man's rich and famous, but God's going to make that ever so more abundantly? Come forward. Don't think about it on next Sunday or next Monday morning. Let's do this together. If you have questions, give us a call right now. I need to sign the prayer line right now. And I'm available in about 15 minutes. But we want you, we want you to contact us now. But we don't want you to delay you coming forward because the dark shadows want to cast it upon you to take your time and to ponder. So why is that? So they can, so they can control your thoughts, ideas, and suggestions. To move into the understanding of the living word of God, to move into his embrace, where God, all God wants to do is embrace you. All God wants to do is place you where he wants to place you, not where you want to be. And to remove away from the snaz of the yoke of bondage, the sin of death. Let's repeat this off to me. Dear God, I admit I am a sinner and I need your forgiveness. I believe that Jesus Christ died in my place, paying the penalty for my sins. I am only right now to turn from my sin and accept Jesus Christ as my personal Savior and Lord. I commit myself to you and ask you to send the Holy Spirit into my life, fill me and take control, and to make me the kind of person you have always wanted me to be. Thank you, Jesus, for changing me. That is my wife singing in the background. I am singing in your name. Most important, the angels of heaven are singing in your name today. We want you to embrace this new day. You have that sovereign determination of his preeminence right before you. Uh, first thing I want is you to see upon the sunrise of this day here in, in North America, or in the Pacific Standard Region, right here in Los Angeles, California, I want you to see is that I'm going to call sovereign determination of his preeminence. And we go into Colossians 1.18. Look, if you will, in, right here. Verse 19. For it pleased the Father that in him should all fullness dwell. What does that mean? It means it pleased the Father that in all things Jesus should have preeminence. For it pleased the Father that him and his Son should, should all fullness dwell. Do you understand you are going to unlock the key, the mystery of history, and to all eternity. God has one eternal plan, just one, and it is that His Son, the Lord Jesus, will have preeminence. Understand that, for it pleased the Father that the name should all fullness dwell. <coughs> Excuse me. For, all, for Paul is going to tell us in Colossians that this is a part of the vast eternal plan of God. It is a purpose of history. Why did God send the Holy Spirit that Jesus might have the preeminence? Jesus said, when he, when he is come, he will not speak of himself. He will glorify me. John 16, verse 13 through 14. The ministry of the Holy Spirit is to glorify Christ. God created you to be habitation for his glory and to go before the earth, whether it's the supermarket lines, your church, your homes, your neighborhood, your workplace is to be an, an ambassador to Christ. To move into teaching and to get into the living word of God because this Bible that I'm holding up is your love note. Is your love note that God wrote for you. And remember, the living word of God is always pregnant, revealing the manifestation of God's glory. And remember, what God has a plan. He has deep provisions for you. And he's going, and again, Many people have emailed me the same question. If I turn my life over to, over to Christ, am I declaring an oath of poverty? And no. The answer to that is no. How hungry do you want your life? How hungry do you want to have this change of your life? God has already met you halfway, let's say at the 50-yard line, halfway point of, of the playing field. You have to come the other half. You have to show God how hungry you want this. And hunger can be unconventional. Because there are many, many, many people out there with sheep's, wolves in sheep's clothing. 
and we go forward in that God can bless you with his unconventional wisdom and blessing and the task that is only revealed to those that know Christ and that know you. Now, if you want to get on what God is doing, if you want to understand what God is up to, if you want to bring your life into line with the Almighty God, then make it the purpose of your heart and of your life that God's purpose will be your purpose and that Jesus will have the preeminence. Now, my my brothers and sisters, you can never know the fullness of God in your life until the one single aim of your life is at Christ, and Christ alone will be exalted. And so yes, we all have our glorious days of work where we go, hey, and we call our wives, yes, I, I, you know, just got a promotion, we got a raise, and there's nothing wrong with that. But we are giving God glory of our own, from ourselves, we are not giving ourselves glory to ourselves. And too many people in today's world want that, want that, and want that. And with this, brothers, brothers and sisters, we need to move into God's illustrations, God's life. So the first thing in our morning is to understand if you discover your treasure is a sovereign determination of his preeminence. This is the mystery of history. All that God is doing is that his son might have the preeminence in your life. Now, I want you to also understand this is what I'm going to call the sweeping dimension of God's light, God's love into your life. What should He be, be preeminent in? Well, look again, if you will, in verse 18 it says that in all things that He might have the preeminence. Colossians chapter 1 verse 18. In all things, in everything, in all things, if you have a strength problem, pray into and, and through that. Pray through the scriptures. Mark 11, verses 22 through 26. 22. Have faith in God. Have faith in God. That is your personal prayer time with God, that prayer. You, you've heard me say this hundreds and hundreds of times, if not more. That is your personal prayer time alone with God. Corporate prayer, it's perfectly fine to have. That is when we are with a group of people praying together like a, a, a midweek Bible prayer service that's, that many churches have. And we, we as a church that comes broadcasting online, and we as a church here in Los Angeles, or we as a church that goes forward to other countries, teaching the pastors through pastors' conference, teaching those that are hungry for the living word of God, those that are hungry with food. And if you have not worked in a while because of the recession, then with your new life with Christ, declare the world around you and your country you live in a progression by the, in the name of Jesus. You need to challenge the leaders of your community, your country, and help them by challenging them to make this a better place to live in. We all must be, be show our, our dignity as ambassadors of Christ. doesn't mean that we have to call presidents or prime ministers idiots because of mistakes even with their job they'll make mistakes as we make mistakes with our jobs but with this brothers and sisters comes the far powerful task of self-control and I don't mean sexual self-control I mean controlling the power of responsibility we have laid up before us if we turn ourselves into Nazi warriors then it is, it is of the expression of the truth that God wants you to explode. Remember, Christ was persecuted and betrayed and denied and spit on and laughed at hundreds of times before I got to Gethsemane. You will have that same expression of your life happen to you. But where God has a plan, he has provisions for you. Where God has a plan, he has something called eternity for you. Turn your life over to the Christ, over to God. There is no time stamp in any church service or our service to come forward with Christ. Some ministers do this every other week. We, my wife and I do this every broadcast, Monday through Friday, four times a day. And then during the uh, weekend, it's twice on Saturday, 6 a.m. on Sunday. And let me give you the times. So we start the day off here at 6 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. My wife 
joins in on the Holy Ghost party at 11 a.m. at 3 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Then I come home with the um, warming up the dinner and warming up the evening at 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And most likely that where you are, your morning is just beginning. So as we come into our evening broadcast and your evening is just coming to an end, it's just beginning where we have, we, have the, we have the power of creation, that's Jesus. We have the power of creation to move into the steadfast love that God wants us to have. We move into the preeminence of having God take, taking control of everything. The blessings of eternity, the blessings of a love guide you into the everlasting new truth, new love, one time, one expression of God. So you have the power to change. Lift all up to Christ. Change yourself. Do it for your families. We have to get out of our stinking way of thinking about ourselves. Let God can command our lives so we can present, and He can command our thoughts so we can present our works before the throne of God. And brothers and sisters, I know we've got busy days ahead of us, but we must do that every day. Every day. Well, how can I do that? I got so I got this to do. I got my to-do list. I got this. I got my gym. I got my wife, my kids. Well, lay everything up before God, and God will give you the measuring stick of how to get through your day. But in Jesus' name, we come to a blessed day. Let's go forward and change this in the matchless name of Jesus. Let's go forward in the expressions of God's living truth. Let's go forward that with this time, brothers and sisters, with this time, we have been, been together. And we are going to take this knowledge and run with it and flow with it and God and change other people around us in the matchless name of Jesus. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you for your time, your endless time of your love that brings us to the road of grace, that brings us to the straight and narrow. Our many are called, our few are chosen. Jesus, we say, as we get rid of Satan out of our lives, Satan has no authority in any homes of this country or countries of this world. Has no authority in our lives, our thoughts, ideas, or suggestions. God, we want you to take control of our thoughts, ideas, and suggestions. Turn our houses, our homes, our workplace, wherever we go into, your own church, our supermarket lines, our buses, our bus stops, everything. God is and bless us with your strength as we lift up our new prayers every day. As we lift up our new prayers every day and we go forward and the strength and the abundance of truth in the matchless name of Jesus in Jesus name we love thee brothers and sisters that does conclude our broadcast for this morning here 6 a.m. Monday here from Los Angeles California and on behalf of Anita Hewitt and myself Brian Hewitt we thank you for your time and until next time we walk by faith and not by sight au revoir adios good day for the people <laughs>